static. Well, good morning, TRUMC. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Lord's Day. So happy to have all of you joining with us in worship today. Those of you here in person at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary, uh, those of you joining us right now on Facebook Live and later on YouTube and our podcast, those of you who are out in the parking lot right now tuning in on 88.9 FM, and those who worshiped with us this morning at 8.45, all of you are part of the TRUMC worshiping family today, and we are so glad that you have joined with us on this wonderful Christ the King Sunday. Uh, our choir is going to begin us today with our choral call to worship. Let us use this time to prepare our hearts, minds, souls, our entire selves to worship the God who loves us. Jesus Christ, Lord of the Church, we rejoice that you have formed your people into one body comp comprised of believers of every race and nation. Your, your salvation, salvation has, has reached to the ends of the earth and to all generations. We praise and thank you that your gospel has reached us and that our voices will join those of many languages this day to proclaim your praise. Accept our praise, purify our hearts, instruct us in your word, feed us at your table, and visit us with your spirit, that we may follow in the ways of faith to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us join our voices together in song now, our opening hymn of praise. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Let's sing together. Yeah. 
Amen. Will you please be seated? Well, and good morning again, church. My name is Jonathan Tompkins, one of the pastors here, along with Pastor Christine Matthews, and we are uh, so grateful you have joined with us in the worship of God today. Allow me to lift up just a few announcements for us, things that are happening in the life of the church that we want you to be involved in. Uh, First off, if you are joining us today, uh, especially for those of you online, uh, you will see this QR code. We'd invite you to scan that, and uh, that will take you to our digital connect card that allows you to to let us know that you are worshiping with us. It'll also allow you to submit some prayer requests and find out different ways that you can serve as part of our church. Uh, For those of you worshiping with us in person today, if you are worshiping with us for the first time or first couple of times, and you would prefer a uh, paper version of that, uh, there are yellow uh, forms in your pews. You can fill one of those out and drop that in the offering plate on your way out today, and we will connect with you later this week. Uh, do you want to note, you'll see that today is a communion Sunday, and on your way in today, uh, if you did not bring your own bread and juice, you'll see that we, there were prepackaged elements that the uh, greeters uh, had available for you. Just a note on those prepackaged elements, there are two things in that. There is juice, but there is also a wafer, and they, uh, they are in different sections on that. And so when it comes time for communion, you need to peel twice. So just make note of that, Okay. Uh, Immediately following this service, we are going to be decking our halls in preparation for the Advent season, which begins next Sunday. So yes, we are decorating before Thanksgiving, uh, but we need to because most of you will not, you know, we'll probably be doing your own Thanksgiving. So we need to go ahead and get decorated today. Uh, so we just need some folks to, uh, to stay after this service and help us set up our chrismon trees and set up some bows and get some things ready for our Hanging of the Green service next Sunday. Uh, some of our wonderful folks have already, already gone to the attic and brought everything down. So there is no attic climbing required of you today. Uh, but uh, if, uh, if enough of you show up, we should have you out of here, I'd say within probably about 30 minutes, uh, 30 to 45 minutes, we should be able to uh, be done. There will also be snacks for you. So if not for anything else, there's snacks. We are still taking backpacks for students at Northwest Middle School. You can drop those off in our uh, Bell Tower entrance way. There's a bin there for them. Uh, please make note that next Sunday is our Hanging of the Greens service. We combine our services that day, and we will be worshiping together one service at 10 a.m. Uh, that morning next week. So please make note of that. This is the beginning of our Advent season, our four week season of preparing for Christmas. Uh, I know Christmas began back at Halloween out there, uh, but in here, we don't begin Christmas until Christmas Eve. We, we do Advent first. Uh, we, we wait and we prepare, and we're excited about this year's Advent theme. Hope is on the way. Uh, part of Advent involves our Advent study. Uh, our growth groups, our weekly groups, take a break during Advent so that we all can come together and participate in our Advent study. This year, uh, it's based on the Voices of Christmas, a daily devotional that our sermon series is based on. Uh, Rachel Gilmore and Kay Cotan wrote this wonderful book. I I invite you to uh, pick that book up. But we're offering you two different ways that you can participate in this year's Advent study. First is in person. That's going to be Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. That's going to be at the Woodlands at Furman, led by Linda Anderson and Miriam Dupuy. Uh, And then we're also offering it via Zoom. That's going to be Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m., led by Pastor Christine and myself. We are going to be sending out the Zoom link for that starting tomorrow in tomorrow's email. Uh, If you're not yet on our weekly email distribution list, there's a way that you can uh, register for that here in the bulletin, or just email me and I will send you the link to the Advent study, which will begin not this coming week, but next week. We're excited about that. Please spread the word that, you know, anything we do as part of the church, it's not just for us, but, but spread the word that this Advent study, we would love it, if, especially the Zoom study. If you know someone who would benefit from this that doesn't live in TR, um, this would be a wonderful opportunity for them to engage with our church. Even if you do know somebody who lives in TR but might not feel comfortable coming uh, for the first time to an in-person something, uh, this Zoom study would be great for that. So I uh, just want to encourage all of you uh, to get involved with our Advent study this year. Uh, This coming Saturday, the City of Traveler's Rest will be participating in the TR Holiday Hop. 
Uh, if you're in town, I wonder if you'll be participating in this as well. It's all along Main Street. The businesses are setting up and having various booths and things. We are participating in that. Our prayer team is going to be setting up a booth right out here at our sign on Main Street. And they're going to be there just to uh, be a sign of hospitality. They're going to offer prayer to folks who want it, but they're also offering free Christmas ornaments that say hope on them. That's part of our Advent theme. Hope is on the way. And they have requested uh, some help from some of y'all. If you would like to just be there anytime between 3 to 6 this coming Saturday, if you just want to kind of be present for a little while to uh, encourage our prayer team and to welcome folks from the community who might be stopping by our booth, they would love to have you. So this coming Saturday, anytime between 3 to 6, right out there by our um, brick sign out there. Camille. <laughs> Are, uh, do we need to bring you some figgy pudding as, as well? Okay, all right. All right, wonderful. So, uh, several of our folks, our choir members, will be, uh, will be caroling here, and, and this is going to be a great Saturday for anybody who's in town, so thank you. And Santa will be there as well. Well, speaking of Santa, I do want to let you all know that next Sunday for our Hanging of the Green service... We are going to be having a special guest here in our worship service. He is a, um, he, he is one of Santa's helpers. In fact, you could even say he is a good buddy of Santa who will be here with us. And he will be presenting us with a new service project that we are going to, as a church, getting involved in, uh, in the Advent season to help spread joy and cheer to all those who love to hear. <laughs> we'll see you next Sunday and you'll see who that is that's going to be here. Friends, we are so grateful that you have joined with us in the worship of God today. Uh, each week we... Um, yeah, we're at that now. Each week, we'd like to give those of you with children in the home uh, brief, actionable ways that you can help disciple your children. We call these parent prayer moments. These were all filmed last year, but they are still on our uh, YouTube page in a playlist. You can access them there. Uh, so uh, this today, we're offering you uh, from Maureen Strange. Again, this was filmed last year. So uh, her grandchild that is in the video has now grown a little bit more since then. Uh, but Maureen is going to tell us about uh, what it means to know God, pray, and be thankful. Hi, I'm Mo, that's short for Maureen, and this is my grandson, and he's almost seven months old. Yep, that means he was born in the pandemic. Uh, we didn't get to see him while he was in the hospital. The first time we saw him, we were downstairs in the uh, parking lot, and they were up on the fourth floor and they held him up to the window and we waved signs at him. First time we got to actually meet him was 14 days after he came home because of quarantine. And the first time I got to hold him was about when he was a month old. So he's missed out on some things. And he hasn't been able to go to church and he hasn't gotten to know how it is to have the nursery worker loving arms around him like Miss Lily and Miss Nicole do. And he hasn't, he hasn't gotten to hear any of the Sunday, the Bible stories that the Sunday school teachers teach him, like Miss Carrie and Miss Rosalind did for my kids and like Miss Jean and Miss Marion are doing right now. So it makes me sad that he's missing some of these things, but he can get those things from his parents. But I want him to have that church community. I want him to have the village to help raise him the way he needs to be raised. But there are three things that I pray for with him and with my other grandchildren. And the first is that he knows God and that he has a relationship with God and he knows about God's love. And that um, that's a pretty special thing uh, with him and God the Father. And the second thing that I want for him to know is I want for him to know how to pray. 
I want him to know that he needs to communicate with God and that's through prayer. And it's a conversation both ways. And it's not just him talking to God. It's not just asking for things, but it can also be uh, waiting for God to talk to him. Be still and know that I am God. The third thing that I want for my grandchildren is I want them to be thankful. I want them to know the many blessings that they have and to recognize those things. And I want them to um, be thankful for them. Um, know that the gifts that they have are from God. And I want them to know that all the gifts, that they are gifts from God as well. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. That's James 1, verse 17. And I want these things for my grandchildren. And I hope that you can give them to your, your kids as well. So be thankful. We've got Thanksgiving coming up. And to everyone, be thankful. Thank you. As Lisa Ann comes to read scripture for us, in addition to being on the screen, it is also on the back of your bulletin on your trail guide for you to follow along. Our reading today is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider himself being equal with God at something to exploit, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names so that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth might bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We will remain seated for our hymn of preparation, Fairest Lord Jesus. Let's sing together.
to point you once again to the back of your bulletin to your trail guide. You will see that in addition to today's scripture, there is some space there for you to take notes. You can write down some trailblazes, some thoughts and ideas to guide you on your journey this week. It's always our hope that God will be speaking something meant just for you today that you're going to write down and take with you this week. There's also some next steps for the journey and a prayer for this week's walk that you can use during your devotional time this week. Today is Christ the King Sunday. This is actually the last Sunday in the Christian liturgical year. Uh, Next Sunday, Advent begins, and that begins an entirely new Christian year for us. So this is almost like our New Year's Eve of the Christian year right now on Christ the King Sunday. And so we hear the word king, Christ is king. When we hear the word king today, the 21st century in America, I think we tend to think of something like this. Now, all you Hamilton fans who have uh, listened or seen the play, you know that that is King George. We hear the word uh, king and we think of King George. Uh, if, you, if you know the song, uh, just sing it with me. You'll be back, time will tell. You'll remember that I served you well. Oceans rise, empires fall. We have seen each other through it all. And when push comes to shove, I will send a fully armed battalion to remind you of my love. <laughs> La da 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 Y'all got to watch Hamilton. Come on. Come on. So that's what a king does, though, right? When push comes to shove, he fights the fight and he wins the war for our love and praise with a fully armed battalion. Now, interestingly enough, you know, this is the king that we rebelled against in 1776. Jesus... Christ is King, Christ the King Sunday. Uh, We didn't read it today, but if you read John's gospel, John 18, uh, Pontius Pilate uh, has put Jesus on trial, and he said, you know, I heard that you're a king. They say that you're a king. Are you a king? And Jesus says, well, you call me a king, but my kingdom is not from this world. Otherwise, my followers would be fighting to defend me. But Jesus says, my king is not from this world. Jesus is not King George or any other king on earth for that matter. He doesn't need fully armed battalions of his followers fighting for him. You know, there's that other scene in uh, Matthew and Luke's gospel just before being taken to Pilate, just before being put on that trial and eventually going to the cross where he's in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and, and they, they come for him with, uh, with their weapons and his disciple Peter takes the sword and tries to defend Jesus with it. In fact, he even lops off somebody's ear with a sword. And what does Jesus do? What does he say? Peter, put your sword away. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. He disarmed his disciple in the garden that night and he disarms his disciples even now. Have, have, have you felt it lately? Have, have you felt that we've been just awash in violence lately? I mean, I've felt immersed in it. And physically, yes. I, I mean, you know, we, t- we turn on our 24-hour news cycle or we, we get on social media and we see all the, 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 the killings and the shootings and the stabbings and the beatings. And physically, yes, there's violence out there, even though, even though statistically it's lower than it has been. But we just see it all the time now. We're immersed in it physically. But what about, that's out there. What, what about in here? What about our own anger? our own attitudes, our own words towards those with whom we disagree. You know, it's been said, and we said it in here before, that words create worlds. Words create worlds. We as followers of the God who created the world with a word, what kind of world are we creating? 
with our words. We feel a a wash in violence, but what, what kind of world do we want to create with? Jesus says, my kingdom is not from this world. And yes, it's, it's a heavenly kingdom. We call it the kingdom of heaven. Uh, uh, but, but, but we tend to think of heavenly kingdom and we think, okay, well, yeah, when, when we go to be with Jesus after we die, then we'll be in the heavenly kingdom. But what, what is it that we pray every Sunday? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray every Sunday that Christ's kingdom come on earth. So it's not just a kingdom in heaven. Christ our king means for the kingdom to come here and now. And that kingdom of heaven never comes by violence. It's not like any kingdom on earth. Don't get your kingdoms confused. So we hear the word kingdom, and again, kingdom to our ears, it, 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 it's old, it's 200, 300 years old, there's no really any kingdoms anymore. If you actually go to the Greek words here, uh, that uh, when, when Jesus is saying, yes, I'm a king and my kingdom, the Greek words used in scripture there, he's actually saying, um, I am, um, I'm an emperor. Now think about the times when Jesus lived. Uh, his land was controlled by the Roman empire and there was an emperor the emperor on the throne the caesars uh, caesar augustus when he was born and then all the other caesars that came after him they were the ones in charge and jesus is uh, or, and these emperors you know they would evangelize uh, that was actually a word that was taken from the greek um, it wasn't just for christians it, they the christians actually took that word but they would evangelize the good news of rome uh, the peace of rome uh, and of course their peace came by power <laughs> and control, and might, you know, fall in line, and things will be peaceful. And Jesus is saying that I am the actual emperor, and and Jesus's early followers, the early Christians, said Jesus is the actual emperor, which means that Caesar is not, and that got them into some trouble. The empire of God, kingdom of God, empire of God, but still empire. There's no empires today. We don't live in an empire. That sounds weird to us. So maybe we just need to translate that for today for us as the government of God. Jesus wants to bring the government of God to earth. Now, of course, to our ears now, we hear government and we automatically, uh, we tend to think that Jesus belongs to a particular political party here in our country. Spoiler alert, he doesn't. Now, I mean, think of it this way. He's not even American, so he can't vote. <laughs> I don't mean to be flippant about that. Uh, being a Christian and, and, and voting and being uh, political, it's, it's, it's part of who we are, and we need to take it seriously. And In fact, I, I preached a whole entire sermon about that about a year ago in October. It's called, How Can I Practice Politics and Keep the Faith? Uh, it's on all of our socials. You can go back and find that. It delves a lot more in-depth into that. But I saw this quote lately. I've been seeing it a lot and and hearing it a lot uh, on Twitter. It's from a politician, a U.S. politician. And and he said, I've heard of plenty of people leaving the church because of politics. But I've never heard of anyone leaving their politics because of the church or because of Christ. That's convicting to me. You know, the government of God, it's bigger than just our country's politics. And it transcends those politics. And the church should do that too. We should transcend them too. You know, we don't divide our sanctuary between right and left. It's not how we divide it. Uh, I, I love every four years when there's a pre- presidential election, you know, we here at the church, we have election day communion. Several of y'all have participated in that over the last uh, eight years that I've been here. Election day communion, and I love the imagery of that, that, you know, we go and we do our duty as U.S. citizens, but then we finally ultimately come to Christ's table where we all are welcome to come and eat together. The government of God is bigger than our country. The empire of God stretches beyond our borders, stretches into the world. The kingdom of God even actually reaches beyond our world. 
There's this verse from Colossians 1. It's the message version of it. And this has become one of my favorite verses over the last few years. In fact, I preached about it uh, this past Easter Sunday. It was our Easter text. Let me read it for you. I just, I love this. It's talking about the risen Christ, Christ our King. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so expansive, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, animals and atoms, people and things, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from Oh, I love that. So spacious is he, so expansive. That is our king. That is our kingdom. Don't get your kingdoms confused. Christ is not a king of fully armed battalions or of partisan politics. Christ is a king of co-suffering love. He's an emperor who evangelizes by giving up power and control and avoiding violence. He is the head of state of a government that transcends any divides that we tend to think up. And he takes all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe and he mends them. A king who mends the universe. Pastor Brian Zond says that the kingdom of God doesn't come by ballots and bullets or by elections or intrigues. And I want to continue today that the kingdom of God does come by cradle, kenosis, and cross. The kingdom of God comes by cradle, kenosis, and cross. I'm going to explain what kenosis means in a minute. I love this image. This is our Christ candle that is in the middle of our Advent candles. It will be uh, here starting next Sunday, and we're going to light it each Sunday. Remember how the song goes, everyone? Candle, candle, burning bright. All right, that's going to be stuck in your head all week. Get ready, (laughs) all all Advent. I love this Christ candle. You'll see that you've got the cradle, you've got the cross, and you've got the crown. The kingdom of God comes by cradle, kenosis, and cross. By cradle. In our scripture today from Philippians 2, it says that Jesus uh, became like human beings, finding himself himself in the form of a human. You know, this is our Christmas story, and we're so familiar with the Christmas story, but every once in a while, I just step back, and it, it blows my mind for a minute that God, our King of the universe, chose to come to us on earth as a, not as a Marvel superhero, but as a baby, born just like we are, vulnerable, who had to be cared for and carried for a while until he could care for and carry others. Our king came in a cradle. And then when he did grow up, still didn't grow into a Marvel superhero, he lived a life of kenosis. That's a Greek word. It means poured out, emptied out. Philippians 2 says that though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Jesus lived a life of kenosis. And I think that's exemplified so well by what he did just before going to the cross. He was in in the room with his disciples, and he washed their feet. The image of Christ washing feet, our king washing feet, that is a life of kenosis. And the kingdom of God then comes by a cross. Philippians 2, when he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The cross 
is our king's coronation. He was given his crown of thorns. He was given his throne made of rough wood. He was given his cross. And he assumed his kingship on that cross. And then, three days later, his resurrection was his vindication. When, when God rose him from the dead, God said, this, this is what a king looks like. A life of kenosis, coming to us in a cradle, reigning from the cross. This is what our king looks like. Exhibiting his power, not through might, not through violence, not through coercion, but through co-suffering love and kenosis. And then he ascended to the Father, ascended to the right hand of the Father, as we say in our creeds. His ascension was his assuming of command. Philippians 2, therefore God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven and on earth and under the earth might bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. See, the Christ who is king now, the one who ascended and assumed command and is Lord of all creation, the Christ who is king now, it's the same Christ who came through cradle and kenosis and cross. And his kingdom has come. And it continues to come. On earth as it is in heaven, whenever his subjects Follow him. In Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4, this was before the scripture that we heard today. Um, I love how Paul puts it. He says, complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united, and agreeing with each other. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility. Think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Kenosis. Cradle. Cross. This, this is Christ our King. This, this is Christ our King. This, this is Christ our King. Our King whose kingdom doesn't come by ballots and bullets, it comes from a broken body shown to us by a broken bread. His kingdom comes by a poured out life shown to us by poured out wine. It's shown to us by a king who invites all of his subjects to his table to eat with him to be like him. This, this is Christ our King. And this is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little you who have been here often and you have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is God's will that those who want God should meet God here. A part of preparing ourselves to come 
to the Lord's table is by first going to God in confession. And so if you will join with me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, church. Christ died for us when we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, who rules from the throne. Again and again, you have established your rule as Lord, claiming us and calling us to follow. Again and again, we turn from your way of leading to establish ourselves as leaders for our own sake distorting the gift of community into a commodity to be used for the benefit of those who rule. And still you called to us, seeking us where we have lost our way, healing us from the injuries we have sustained, and inviting us to come and drink from the river of life-giving water. And so, Lord, with your, pray, your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Will you sing this with me? This, this is Christ the King, the Son come down from heaven. Oh, see and hear and sing, the word of God is given. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, coming among us in the weakness and vulnerability of an infant. He reminds us of our need for care and our call to provide it to all who are in need. Gathering disciples and calling crowds for healing, he showed us that your leadership begins with compassion that your rule is the rule of saving love. Witnessing boldly to your kingdom, visiting the sick, the friendless, and the needy. Eating with outcasts and reaching out to prisoners, inviting all to enter the joy of your saving love. He accepted death at the hands of the kings of the earth. But you, Lord, raised the slain lamb, proving that lamb power is what rules, that the risen Christ is the King of King and Lord of Lords. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we sing the mystery of faith. This, this is Christ the King, the bread come down from heaven. Oh, taste. 
taste and see and sing how sweet the man given. King Jesus, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood and renewed by your spirit to bring the good news of your kingdom to all the world by word and living example. By your spirit, Lord, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and invites us all to sit down and feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And let the church sing. This, this is Christ the King, the sweetest wine of heaven. Oh, taste and see and sing, the Son of God is given. This is the body of Christ, broken and given for you. This is the blood of Christ, poured out and shed for you. Taste and see the goodness of our God. Will you pray with me? Let's pray the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us all to say. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We have received this gift from God this morning. And now we have an opportunity to not only receive but to give through our tithes and offerings. There are many ways that you can do that. There are offering plates in the narthex in the back. There's through the mail during the week or going on our website to e-giving or a number to text to give. Let us give back but a portion of what we have received.
you'd like to know more about what it means to be a disciple of King Jesus through Travelers Rest United Methodist Church, please don't hesitate to speak with Pastor Christine or me after this service. We will be hanging out <clears throat> underneath the bell tower out there. We'd love for you to come by and say hello. Our sending hymn today, all praise to thee for thou, O King divine. Um, you'll see that it is based on our scripture text for today. Let us join our voices in song as we sing together. grace and peace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship and comfort and strength of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to serve God and neighbor in all that you do. Amen.